Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean Belegian. Hey, what is going on? So glad you could join us Thursday night. I know there's some hockey action going on right now. Wings are in action. Habs are in action. That matters to at least one person here. NTDP in action. But the coolest thing about doing a show like this is you can watch it later and you can enjoy some good hockey talk. I'm bringing in one of the guys that I uh, respect his opinion uh, he's not only a longtime friend, but as I said, I respect his opinion as well. Mike Ivaso, more on him in a second. Let me take care of some programming stuff. So normally we're going to have like a snazzy open for this because this isn't like off the air. This is what the puck. Uh, we're building an open for that. It's going to be available on all the channels, all of that. You know the routine. Uh, but for tonight, we're just doing it this way because this is our maiden voyage, no doubt about that. All right, let's bring him in. Uh, one of my old buddies from Livonia. If you followed any of the barbecue stuff that we do, uh, chances are he's a guy that's cooking a lot of the stuff next to me. And he's also my broadcast partner, my Harry Neal <laughs> on uh, State Champs broadcast, Mike Ivasol. It's great to have you here, Mike. What's it, up, buddy? It is great to be here. You know, just a short drive over here and to talk some hockey, like you said, like we've been doing since 1991 in the Little Caesars uh, at Five and Levant. It's it's hysterical. A true story, okay? I need my diet new. Um, true story. So we used to get together and we would watch games. There was once a time for the older generation out there, there was once a time where you were lucky if you had one or two games on during a week. You might get a Wings game. Right. You, you'd get the Hockey Night in Canada game. Forget the doubleheader on Saturday night. That that never happened. Never, ever happened, okay? Um, but there was something called Sports Channel America. And if there was a Sports Channel America game on, he and I would get together and we would fill up, like, literally his mother's kitchen table with food. And his mother would go, Michael, how many people are you ho- having over tonight? And Mike would look at her strange and say, just us two. Because, we, I mean, there would literally, Mike, yeah. no no exaggeration, there would be a plate enough to probably feed 10 people. Is that the best way to oh, say it? Yeah. I mean, the, all the wings and pizza you could eat, we would have the crazy bread, whatever we were fancying. Yeah, it was outstanding. Shout out to your mother, by the way. Is is ah. is. Mrs. Ida still watching by some chance? Well, I hope they're, she they're, does. they're down in Florida. If her and Seb could get it together, I, I know my wife sent them down the, the link, and I know she's on Facebook. I think she does everything on Facebook. Good, good. Uh, so, no, obviously lots of things to talk about. Hi, Ben, our buddy Ben. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about something that Ben knows a little bit about in just a minute. Uh, of course, the Motor City Rockers and the FPHL Wings just scored, thanks to Chris. And Craig for bringing that up. Craig Ward, nice to see you. Chris Ogdale, nice to see you as well. Congratulations, dear Wolverines. Tip of the cap. I know what a Wolverine fan you and your family are, so that's the way it goes, Nathan. (laughs) Bingo, bingo, gang. I'll have the whitefish. Uh, So you're going to be catching this later. Uh, Let me start with this, Mike, Uh, because I I know, uh, Mike, you are a long, long Red Wing fan. And let's face it, it hasn't been easy for quite some time with this franchise. Right. And it depends who you talk to. There are a lot of people that feel confident moving forward. There are a lot of people that are saying this is taking too long. I think the one thing that we can all agree on, right? It's easier to talk about a rebuild. It's far more difficult to actually rebuild. And one of the things that I always say is, and I respect the heck out of Steve Eiserman. I hope there's not one person out there that misconstrues that, okay? And I think he's eventually going to get it right. The one thing that I always bring up when, when people try to compare what he's doing with the Red Wings to what he did with Tampa, it is a lot easier when you can start out with Steven Stamkos and Victor Hedman. There wasn't anything closely resembling those two players here. Um, Mike, where is this rebuild at in your mind when you look at the red wings right now 
January 25th, 2024. Where is this team at? Where are they going? Are they a playoff team this year? Well, I mean, that's what we have to, to talk about. We The one thing we mentioned when we were talking about what we we're going to say today was playoffs, mm-hmm. question mark, right? So where where are they? They're not where Tampa Bay was where when he took over. And my biggest fear right now is – I don't think they are a playoff team. I I, I think they're going to be struggling on the backside uh, of the puck on the defensive end of it. But is it is it where it's supposed to be? I think so. I think when he came in and said what five years? Yep. I, I think that that's safe. He to didn't say. say it, but you're going to have to trust me. <laughs> it was going to be five years. Yeah, it is going to be five years, and I think it was a setup as soon as he got here. Steve Eiserman coming back to Detroit. People wanted him just to bring the cup with them, and, and it was and it was going to be here. They weren't going to give him any time. And as soon as you come in as a GM and they have a name like the Iser plan, I mean, is it going to happen fast enough for anybody? Mm-hmm. One of the things, by the way, can I give a shout out? How about this? Nathan said, it's my birthday. This is how I'm spending my evening. Never doubt your awesomeness. No, you are <laughs> awesome. Happy birthday to you, dude. Seriously, thank you. I've enjoyed chatting with you over the years, and, and, and it's really cool. Uh, that you're spending at least part of your birthday with two losers like us. Um, Mike, you know, the the biggest thing about the Red Wings, and I know you and I have laughed about this over the years, and I can go down the list. I think this fan base loves to put players on a pedestal that they don't belong. I, I, I think this fan base is very guilty. And I know I've probably had conversations with many of you guys over the years about some of this stuff. You know, I'm not going to mention too many names. I remember, remember Mikhail Samuelson. I'll never forget this. If our buddy Hubie is watching right now, (laughs) we we call him Mike Bossy Samuelson. Because, I mean, people were trying to compare him to Mike Bossy. I mean, that is not an exaggeration. And and so that's been a running gag that we've had. And I think this franchise, um, at least the fan base, and I, I'm sure all fans do this. You know, you're, you you have a tendency to maybe look at your guys through rose-colored glasses and, and, and maybe put them on a pedestal that they don't belong. I think right now this franchise, and I think quite frankly this fan base, is, is pretty grounded in regards to knowing what they have and what they need yet. Because you brought it up. The defense core is not good. It's, it's just not good. And I think if you saw the Dallas game the other night, that second period was next to unwatchable. And I'll say this again. Listen, everybody should say a little prayer tonight for Alex Lyon. Because if yeah. Alex Lyon wasn't doing what Alex Lyon has been doing this year, I think this season would be a, a heck of a lot rougher. But right now, I think in mass, People are pretty realistic about where this rebuild is, to your point. 100%. And I think that we can thank Steve Eiserman for that with some of the things that he has done. When you bring in Patrick Kane and you bring in Alex DeBrinkett, uh, you take the pressure off guys like Dylan Larkin, off Lucas Raymond, a young kid, and you can bring him down. Now, moving forward, we have this trade deadline coming up, which we love. It's almost a holiday for us that I would love to see them now take that pressure off of Mo Sider. And then I think when you do that and you put guys where they belong, like Larkin down in a secondary role, they play better. The fans then become a little bit more grounded with that. Speaking of Larkin, he did score tonight. Yes. My pal Tammy, look at reporting live from LCA. Yes. Wings nothing. Wings one, Flyers nothing after one. Look at L-Town Boss. checking in. You say, look at that. Gordy Wilson, <laughs> Livonia legend. What's up, GW? Bossy just rolled over. Absolutely. But, I mean, you guys have heard that. And, and Hubie, if you're out there, I mean, that was like a running joke. Somebody called the show years ago and, and like, literally compared Samuelson to Bossy. And, and I, like, there was silence. It was funny. I didn't mean it because, like, I my first reaction was to go, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But that's never been my style. So I'm like, how do I say this in a kind way? And I said – Mike Bossy might be the most pure goal scorer I've ever seen in my life. Might be. So I'm not I, – I, I can't go there with you, friend. I'm no. sorry I can't go there with you. No. But you know what? Uh, look at Tom, the legend. My guy. All right. 
Art jumping in, my gluten free brother. But yeah, uh-huh. I mean, you get my Polkanen. Remember the Polkanen love? I mean, there have been so many of these guys that people thought, oh my gosh, this guy's the next the big thing and everything. And it, it's easy to talk about rebuilds. It's far more difficult to do that. And I know Steve Eisenman, you brought this up, Mike. Steve Eisenman will never say that he put a number on it. Never. Okay. You've got to trust me when I say this. Okay. It just trust me. Trust me, trust me. That's all I'm going to say. I know that five years is what they were looking at. We're not even five years in yet, guys. He was hired on April 19th, 2019. We're not even five years in yet. So what they look like next fall is is kind of going to tell me how close we are to getting back to that point. Because, Mike, to your point, remember, this is Steve Eisman's words, not my words, not Mike Ibisil's words. He said... We don't want to just get back in the playoffs. We want to compete like we did and people are used to. Where, let's face it, the Red Wings were the measuring stick for the entire National Hockey League for the span of about 15 years. I think next fall we'll have a a better idea of how close they are. But your opinion, do they have to make the playoffs this year? No. No. Mm -hmm. What happens when they don't? What happens to a, a Patrick Kane, this guy that we brought in? Does he stick? The, the signing still doesn't make sense to me. So I'm thinking if they don't, what's next? By the way, I, I'll get to that in a second. Aaron said Lion is just needs to keep the seat warm for Augustine. I, Aaron, can I say this? You know what? That's Steve Eiserman's MO. If you look at how he's operated as a general manager, if you remember, they made that crazy run back in, in 2010 with Dwayne Rollison, who was about 97 years old at the time. And he went like this, and he rung out the last few drops of Dwayne yep. Rollison, if you remember. And the same thing, remember Ben Bishop? Yep. They, they went on that crazy run a couple different times with Ben Bishop. Ben Bishop was never going to be the guy. He had his eye on Vasilevsky from the day that he drafted him. And it was going to take some time, just like it'll take some time for Sebastian or Trey, whoever, right. you know, they, they, they settle on. But you are absolutely right. But I, I will reiterate, if it wasn't for Alex Lyon right now, where might this team be? This team has a whole bunch of extra points simply based on how well he's played. He's played incredibly well, especially when you consider what's behind him. Absolutely. But the fear of, of uh, Lyon is you, you look at the metrics of things and, how long can he do? Is it sustainable what he's doing? He is playing so well over what he's done in the past, and I just don't know if that's who he is. He played 13 games was his biggest, uh, the most games that he played. Yeah, He's at 18 right now today, I think. Yeah. So it, you're going to see somewhere. he. I don't know if he's a 920 save percentage guy, uh, but we'll have to see that. Uh, look at our buddy Kirk Hunter, another one of my broadcast hey, partners. Yep, absolutely. The coach, Kirk Hunter here. Uh, Tammy said she ran into Keith Jones. Really nice guy. Uh, No doubt about that. Uh, Darren said, where's Blake, my son-in-law? And did you see what Blake said? (laughs) We're going to keep this one to To the the experts. experts. Face-to-face TV. How about this? Spirit and Spitz tied at one middle of the second period in Windsor. I miss the OHL. I miss it. I miss I had so much fun. I'm actually going, Mike, you don't even know this. Not that you would care. I'm going on London, Ontario radio tomorrow uh, with the voice of the London Knights. He does an afternoon show in London to talk some Lions with him. That's uh, Mike Stubbs, great guy. Shout out to Stubbsy. Nice arena down there. I saw Pearl Jam with uh, one Mr. Darren Dudek there. It's it's a great little area there. Yeah, Yeah. it's a beautiful arena. Absolutely beautiful arena. So um, you don't think they get in this year? I think they slide in, and I I, to your I don't think it matters. You don't, but you don't think it matters. No, I don't think. No, so explain I don't think it matters. If we can get to it, though. explain the Kane signing to me. People have tried to explain this to me and why he's I'm glad here. you brought that up. You know what? I look at it, and I know a guy like you, you don't want to hear this. And I know some of you don't want to hear this. The way that I look at the Patrick Kane signing is this. Patrick Kane, um, it is a very low-risk, potential high-reward situation. If he plays really well... Obviously, that speaks for itself. Or let's say the Red Wings fall out of contention. What kind of price tag might a guy who's playing well garner from a- another team? Now, I could see Mike, as I'm looking into the camera, I could see Mike kind of rolling his eyes because I know a lot of people out there, you're sick about hearing about draft picks. You're sick about, you know, uh, 
hearing about, oh, great, now we have, you know, another guy to look forward to. But to me, you're still getting something for nothing. It didn't cost you anything. It didn't, you know, there, you didn't right. have to give up anything. If, if you could pull, who knows, you know, what, what the value would be. And if, if number one, if he, if he gets back to, to being 100% healthy, right. you, you're still getting something for nothing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, and that's the part that makes sense to me. It's it's when you when you make signings like that, that's usually that next step. And him coming here to me said, "Hey, we're we're ready to make this step. I feel we're going to make this step." And then if it doesn't happen, what happens? And you know, it, it's something for nothing. If we get more assets, I just need to see these assets. I need to see more and more because it wasn't too long ago before Iserman, we had a ton of assets, whether they were down in Grand Rapids or Andorondack back in the day, and, and we never saw them yep. produce. Now, before the salary cap, we could trade them away, and we would have unbelievable teams. But with the salary cap, these kids have to hit. They have right? to, they have to have hit. To. We have to have those low-end contracts to support those high-end contracts at the end. My fear is even if we just squeak in, and, and we we went. That's that next step. And and I'm thinking, what happens if we don't make that right now? I don't think this team is capable of pulling that upset in the first round no. either. No, I just don't. No. I don't think this is a playoff no. metal team yet. The especially defense. on the blue line. Yeah, the, the, exactly. it's, it's the defense. Your your top three D are a minus. Yeah, I mean you you, you can't have that. Uh, my buddy, another L Town legend, uh, Jason Murray, go Stevenson Hockey. Michael agree yes. with that. Yep. Yep. Uh, Aaron, two nothing win wings. Tom said it was Mo. Say his name. In, oh, in look at that! Show. Yes, hey, he heard me. Now you know what he was. Even he might be a plus one now over on. Yeah. Uh, Auger, yes. No recruiting stars. Thank you. I'm glad we've got that established. Uh, Skull Crusher, what's up? Uh, Kirk said, "Do you resign him if you make the playoffs?" Uh, meaning, meaning I'm Patrick assuming Kane, Kane right? What's the price? Talk to me about the price. Because you got to watch the cap. 1,000%. Do you know what I would say to him? I, I would flip it around on him. Patrick, you made a point to tell anybody who would listen that this is where you wanted to play. And this is, you know, um, even your hometown, Buffalo Sabres. Right. You, you know, this is where you wanted to play. Well, how bad do you want to play here? Wow. And I'm not I'm not talking about hometown discounts because the, the likelihood of a hometown discount is so small. I mean, Another blessing of Nick Lidstrom being here is that he legitimately did give a hometown discount. You you don't it it's irrational to think that you're going to get some kind of uh, deal like that. It is it's it's irrational to think that you're going to get some kind of deal like that. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Julie said, uh, speaking of Stevenson, when you said your old friend was going to be on the show, I thought you were going to bring up Dave Mitchell. Ouch. Julie, you remember him though, right? You remember Julie, Little Caesars, Mike, Julie, Absolutely. Julie, Mike. Uh, Coach Mitchell's going to join us sometimes. And Jason, you heard that right. Uh, Coach Mitchell is going to join us sometime. I, I did. Mike doesn't know this. Don't tell him I told him this. I did ask if Coach Mitchell could join us tonight. Unfortunately, he couldn't. But Coach Mitchell is going to join us sometimes. Uh, I'd like to get Coach Cal on. Wouldn't that be fun? Can, can you wait wait a couple months to bring Coach Callan? I think we'll be. <laughs> but I, you know, Coach Callan, if you're watching, I promise we won't talk about your team. More on Coach then, Callan absolutely, and absolutely. his team in, in a little bit. Absolutely. No I always have to carry my press pass with me when I walk by him because he won't talk to me unless I have my press pass yeah. I'm from the media. That, that, that's exactly it. So, uh, yeah, we got that out of the way. Um, you know what? Thank you, Alex, another big hockey fan. Uh, so this was a strange week. This one came out of literally nowhere. Mike, I know losers like you and I are perusing Twitter constantly and looking for content. And I can tell you I am perusing, in particular, Montreal Twitter, both in English and Francais, uh, all the time. And the Patrick Waugh to the New York Islanders thing came literally out of nowhere. Um What's your reaction? Because I know at one point in time, you were a big fan of the New Jersey Devils yep. when, when Lou Lamarillo was there. What is your thought process about the long-term relationship between Patrick Waugh and Lou Lamarillo? It's going to be interesting for sure, right? But he has started off on the right foot, uh, Patrick Waugh, that is. Did you see his first press conference? He's Wow, I love him. It, I'm sorry, I love it, him. I mean, it's great. We we actually have talked about him on our broadcast. What's mm -hmm. the one thing that he started that everybody does now? 
pulled the goalie it's with like 10 brilliant. minutes left to go in the game. It's all him. I mean, that really was. That was all him. That was 100%. all him. But as far as his relationship, he was a prickly pair. He was going to fight every coach on the other bench, every media member, everything. But he has come in, and he's kind of learned, I think. Like I said, it did come out of order, but I, th- I think he's learned. His first press conference was very professional. He was he was talking about the hockey gods, and sometimes you get breaks, sometimes you don't, but I'm proud of the progress we made in this game. All the right things, right? How long does it last? 1,000%. How long does it last when you or your team just gave up three goals in the place that you grew up playing in my in Montreal? I would love to see. I've seen the Twitter pictures of the, the angry Wah face. I'd love to see what was said in between periods there. It breaks my heart. <laughs> Alex said, uh, I thought it was an April Fool's joke when I saw that Wah was going to coach the Isles. I think that. Nicholas said, wings three, nothing. Wow. Can you let us know who, who got the goal? Uh, somebody, somebody give it here. Let me tell you this. Okay. The one thing with Lou Lamarillo and you yes. know this as well as anybody else. Okay. If, if there is any kind of discontent, he has no problem pulling the plug literally at any point in time in the oh, season, which he just did. He does. Right? All, all, he, 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 he'll do it with two weeks left in the season. He'll do it at the beginning of the season. Larry I mean, Robinson's got a cup because of that. Yep. I, I mean, that's just, you said the L word, but um, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing I'm going to be, you hit the nail on top of the head. I'm going to be really intrigued to see how long Patrick Waugh can stay on the straight and narrow. I don't think that's him. I think what has made Patrick Waugh one of the greatest goaltenders of all time is that edge. Yes. And what has made him a damn good hockey coach, more so in the junior ranks, okay? I mean, where, where Rempar, Quebec Rempar, they, I mean, obviously he had incredible success there couple Memorial Cups, is is that edge. Um, I don't think Patrick Waugh is being Patrick Waugh without that edge. So to your point, I think he's going to do the right things and say the right things for a little while, and then he's going to go back to being Patrick Waugh. I, you know what? I think so. But, I mean, time, time will tell. Well, from what I've been reading, the big thing that they're talking about with the Lou Lamorello thing is, is they they obviously trots leaves Lambert comes in, but there wasn't much change that was there. Right, they didn't see it, and and it wasn't working. So as we sit here, the lines head on, and we talk about the c word, culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this morning I, I was watching NHL Network, and they talked over and over and over. I think it was Rupp, Mike Rupp talking about the culture that he believes Patrick Waugh is going to bring to that on top of some of the changes that needed to happen on the ice that they're talking about. But they're, they're talking about – and it, it brought back the Lions. And this is kind of the new thing. These guys that are – Patrick, Hall of Fame hockey player, coming in and coaching. So, I mean, the goalies are – I mean, have to be going – Loving it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, oh my God, Patrick Waugh is my coach. So he could bring something, that winning culture back in. He could change that locker room. And the Islanders have been this close a lot, you know, so they, they're they not too far. And with Lou Lamorello, are, we, are you ever too far? Such a great point. If you remember what Trotz did with them a couple of years ago, they took Tampa to a seventh game. Because not that I remember this perfectly, on a Thursday night, the Habs knocked off <sighs> – Vegas in overtime and and punch your ticket to the Stanley Cup Finals, which I still that that seems like a dream. Um, and then if you remember, the Friday night was the Game Seven, yeah. and and Tampa only beat them one nothing. That was that it, was a one it, nothing game. And and yes. now in fairness, if you remember watching that, Tampa dominated them that game. I mean, mm-hmm. really, they they uh, they choked yeah. them out. They didn't get much of an opportunity. But a one goal game in in a seventh game uh, uh, with your ticket being ready to punch. I think that tells you all that there's a heck of a lot of talent there. And I think John Tavares leaving really helped the franchise as crazy as that sounds. That's crazy to say, but it, but it did. Now you talk about punching a ticket. I don't know. There'd probably be no reason for you to remember, even though you have the greatest memory. I had a huge, huge Islanders ticket to win the Stanley Cup. I do remember that. Oh my God. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was was pretty big. I remember that. And it was, like you said, I knew right away they were. Even though they ended up just one nothing, they had nothing. They spent everything that they had to get to that game seven. Yeah. Speaking of high school coaches, look at another guy there. Look at Coach Barazzini. Hey. From Novi. Uh, much respect to you, Coach. Really appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> Tony, Tony Sierra, another L-Town legend in the house. Appreciate you, uh, as always. 
Uh, I'm going to be really intrigued to see how this plays itself out. I, listen, I'm biased. I think you guys all know me. I love Patrick Waugh. I, I think the National Hockey League is a better place with Patrick Waugh in it. I just do. Even if you hate his guts, you, he's the type of guy you love to hate him, right? You, you love to hate him, right? Oh, my well, Aunt Maureen giving an update oh, as well. Hi, Aunt Maureen. Well, hi. But right, and Patrick Waugh is a yes. guy you, you, love to, you love to hate him. I, I just had a conversation today. Uh, I don't know if it was with Seb or if it was someone at work about how unbelievably, or maybe it was just you when I got here, how unbelievably boring the NHL regular season is. It is. We need Patrick Waugh. We need guys like this. We need starts to games uh, like the, the the Florida game last night. We we need a little bit of that. We need a little bit of hate. I'm tired of everybody hugging after games or, or during games and high five. Knock it off. We need the regular season to mean something. And I, you know what? It's going to mean something when you play Patrick. Well, I'd love to see that second period of the Habs game tonight. We we sound like cement heads and, and Neanderthals, and I couldn't care less. We grew up in an era where it was 1990, and there could be 58 different parties going on, mm-hmm. whether it be in Ypsilanti, whether it be in Livonia. Um, if our buddy Carl Gust is watching, uh, a true story, I might can vouch for this, I would not work on Saturday night because it was nope. hockey night in Canada. Wouldn't that talk to always, anybody either. That was always the rule. Just leave me alone. Give me a few hours to myself. But we grew up in an era where you knew a few days in a row. If 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 the Wings were playing the Rangers on a Saturday night, there was going to be a return engagement between Ty Domi and Bob Pro. Oh, there was 100%. going to be a return engagement. If it's the Hawks and, and the Wings, it was going to be – Charlie Manson, Dave Manson oh. in Chicago, and Joe Kosher. It was going to be Chris Nyland and Jay Miller in Boston. We grew up in that era. And I know that this new generation, especially the new NHL media, aren't we glad that those days are over? It was so backwards and dangerous. No. I'm not glad those days were over. It was fun to watch. It was good for the game. People enjoyed it. And, and they, I don't think they realized what you took out of it because we've had this conversation a million times, and I'll be the first one to say, I, I and I'm sure I'm going to get hate for this. I don't need fighting in hockey. I need hate in hockey. Mm-hmm. And You're the thing is, that. That, but the thing is, is you have to have fighting in there to have hate. There, there's got it, it equals itself out. It, re, it really goes hand in hand. So I don't need, and I, I can say right now, I can't stand the fights that are happening in the game today after a clean hockey shot. Oh, it's that, that makes it's, no sense. I, I'm going to agree with that. It, it's it is the, the the fighting was there. The hate was there for a reason. You know, the, the dirty hits to protect your stars and stuff like that. When you take it out, it is, I don't know, I, I will watch. There's teams. I've been writing down names all day today, teams and players that I make a point to watch, but I can only go so far with it because it's just, it's too scrimmagey. Yeah. No, I, by the way, uh, listen to the coach, patrolled by the players. 100, 100%. In, and and now they've taken it to where it, it's patrolled by the league. It's patrolled by by the rep, and it's just it's it's a hard watch. My sometimes. aunt said two two complete years of hockey haven't even went to weddings in '98 when the Wings were on TV in the corner and everybody was watching. Yeah, it was phenomenal. I mean, and and you know what? You knew. I mean, listen. Okay, I we just stumbled on this, and this is what happens when we have <laughs> a conversation like this. What what does everybody remember from the Wings run? Right. Listen. Off the top of your head, do you know the date they won the Stanley Cup in in 2008? Do you know the date they won the the Cup in 2002? Do you know the date they won the Cup in 98 or 97? Do you remember the day against the brawl with with Darren McCarty and Claude Lemieux? Everybody does. It's March 26th. (laughs) Everybody does. Everybody. Or Tony said 27. He said 26. But you get my point. Everybody, (laughs) right? 100%. 100%. Everybody remembers that. That was that was the culmination. That's when everything came together, whether we want to admit it or not. And that's all right, Tony. I mean, and and that to me, Mike, that that was it was a different era, and it was the guys taking care of things. And I've always said this, and you've probably been privy mm-hmm. to the conversation. Mac and I have talked about this not only in private, but on the air at, at different places, okay? Say what you want about Claude Lemieux. I'll take that son of a 
on my team in a heartbeat. I really will. I, I will take, and I know you will too. I'll take that guy on my team in a heartbeat. He, he, guys go to war with him. The one thing he had to do, going back to what started this conversation, Claude Lemieux had to answer the bell the next year. Mm -hmm. He had to. I mean, there's no doubt about it. A guy that had so much respect in the room lost that respect by the way he turtled, and he turtled against Darren McCarty. And he knew there's only one way to get that back. I have to go up to Darren McCarty the first time we see each other the next season and say, we are going to go. And I always laugh when you watch it, the replay, because – like Claude comes up and says something to Darren, and you just see Darren kind of look at him like, "Really? <laughs> like, like, mm, yeah, hungry, you know?" But it, I mean, that to me, and that's what I'm. We all knew it was going to happen. We all yeah. knew it was yeah. going to happen, and that's when guys had to answer the bell. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think today, if I hit you with a clean hit, all right, I don't care who you are. If it's a clean hit, it's a clean hit. Everybody wants to fight now. Right. One hundred percent. It just doesn't. It, it baffles me. I, I don't get it. And I think just like taking fighting out of the game has affected it and taking a lot up. That right there is bad for the game too, and, and it yep. changes the game. It, it, you want I, how many people will complain to me? There's no hitting, and why would I go hit somebody if I'm going to get my face beat? In? Yeah. You know, like you, you you've taken, and that's the total play of the game. You know, I I love our generation is so hypocritical. And I used to talk about this with my buddy Blaine all the time. Our generation, and I know so many guys out there are from like our generation, okay? Out of one side of our mouth, we love to say, hockey was so much tougher when we were younger. <laughs> the game is so soft today. And yet, on the other side, when you bring in a guy like Alex Brinkett, or, or you look at a guy like Cole Coffey in Montreal, right? Yep. These guys are too small to play in this league today. Well, which one is it, Sugar Cup? You know what I mean? Is the game soft? Or or is it so tough that these guys can't play? If you can put pucks in the net, I don't care what size you are, where you're from, it doesn't matter. The game has changed. And, and now all of a sudden, the, the, the ability for guys like a Cole Caulfield, like an Alex Debrinkit, to, to thrive in a league like this, they couldn't do that 25, 30 years ago. So I, I always laugh at our generation. Out of one side of our mouth, we talk about how soft the league is, and out of the other side of the mouth, oh, there's no place in the game for a little fellow like that. Shut yeah. up. It drives me nuts. Put the puck in the net. There's always a place for you. Tony said one side of the mouth is dip. Yep, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, Adam said it seems like there's more stick work and dangerous hits if there is no fighting to police, and I couldn't agree with you more. you got to police oh. the game. 100 percent you, you have to you 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 have to like kurt said you have to let the players do it when the players can't do it then that's when the refs have to get involved and do that isn't that great the brawl in hockey town was kicked off by larry onoff and forsberg of all i love peter forsberg i did i just the wolf i love guys he jeez oh pete what a freak so good they you go back and you watch some of these guys I, I wish people would go back and watch them because they hated them so much. Yeah. And, and there's going to be a guy that I need people to do this to, especially in Hey, Hey, Hockey Town. I need people when Sidney Crosby retires to actually go back and watch it's this never guy. Gonna happen. That. You know it. It's never they, you, have, you have to be able to see. Forsberg's another it's one. There's probably happen. people punching their computer screen right never. now. because Sidney Crosby is so good. And, and I, I'm sorry. And I know – some of you guys that are joining us right now have accused me of being his lover over the years. I, I Sidney Crosby is so good. He is such a complete player. It is absurd. I, like, honestly, it has been a pleasure watching Sidney Crosby in his career. It, oh, it really great. has been. Um, more on your favorite player, late C. Sidney. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Dino, the bra, you know, Dino, the bra was oh. on my birthday, made my day. Absolutely. So. This one right here, the the best hockey game I ever went to was when my dad took me to see the Probert Troy Crowder fight. Funny story, our buddy Joe Amit and I had tickets to that. And but the funny story is that we went to the game. Who sat right in front of us? Hmm. And, and I could be making this up, and I, I don't know if I sent Joe the link because you know I tend to do stuff. I like could this. be making this up, but. I swear, uh, Rod McLean and Don Cherry sat right in front of us. That's what Nathan just said. Look at Don Cherry and Ron McLean were there, two rows in front of us. They both signed. So, so two rows. So one row in front of you was me because he signed my ticket, so I didn't make it up. 
So I was going to say, if Joe was out there listening, he could totally back up way better. That's before McLean threw Cherry under the bus, too. Oh. Can I get on that for a second? You can get on it, right. yeah. Can I get... Do you remember, and, and I hope you guys out there remember this. Do you remember when, like, intermissions on CBC were can't miss television? And I'm not just talking grapes, okay? Grapes was awesome. Mm -hmm. I love grapes. I think he does, too. I don't yeah. want to speak for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but the intermissions were so good. I, what happened? <laughs> you know I can't. I don't that listen. I like. I, I'm serious. For the rest of you guys, do you guys like, or is it us? Do yeah, really? Is, I, is I, it I'm us, not, or do they? See no, the same I'm not thing? being funny. Are, are you guys? Are you guys the same? I don't. And they tried to bring in biz, right? Thinking yes. and, and so a couple weeks ago, I forget what game it was. It was one of the games the Habs got slaughtered. In other news, the sun will rise tomorrow. Right. But I, so I watched it with Biz, and it was like it wasn't Biz; it was like Diet Biz. It was like Biz Light. It wasn't Biz because I enjoy you, Biz. You, I enjoy Biz and doses, mind you. Yes. Okay, but it wasn't. He was like, "Calm down, Biz," and it was it was uncomfortable, and I turned it off. So you know they had to talk with them, right? Like they like that's what it is. You can't do the, you can't be Biz. I mean, you can't be biz. Me and you couldn't be on there. No one, none of us could be on there. Did you see Jason? Elliot Friedman is Sling Blade 2.0. Oh. Tony, mm. Tony, do the cherry invitation. You, you know, Tony, seriously, it, they should have me as Don Cherry. Listen, this is Mike Ivesell. Let me tell you right here, this kid, Kingston boy, put it there, Mike. I, they, yes, I, I would take anything over. It's such a shame for me. Hockey Night in Canada was an institution and can't miss television until about five years ago. I, I can't, I no, can't it watch is, it no. anymore. I no. can't. It, it was great. It was informative. They, they had all the stuff that you'd want to see. Like if you're watching, no matter if you were watching the wings get, you turned on the, the, the intermission of, of CBC. I love the fact a few years ago that I got CBC on my cable. But it's it's not the same. We are gonna look at look seriously. We have been here for, look at for thirty seven minutes, and we've gotten through three of our topics. Does that surprise you? You get two guys talking puck like this. All right, let's talk a little bit about college hockey. We want to kind of hit on everything on on this over the course of the season. Pretty special things going on right now with Michigan and Michigan State. I don't know how many of you pay attention to the to the college game. I, I think Mike, we're on the cusp. Pretty good times. And, and and let me start with both the coaches. Um, Coach Nightingale at Michigan State is a guy that is all Spartan, was there, gets Michigan State, and is finally getting some of the high caliber guys to consider Michigan State and then some. And, and conversely, Brandon Nerado is a guy at Michigan that gets Michigan, and he's continuing a, a long period of success. It's really cool to see what's going on in our backyard. Listen, you know me, go green all day. I got a chance to know Coach Nightingale a little bit. Uh, awesome guy. But, Mike, exciting times around here for Michigan and Michigan State Hockey. Yeah, I, both those guys uh, have done stuff with the youth programs around here, and they're just different. They're, they're those different guys. When they're on the ice, they even demand the, the attention of the little kids. sevy has been in uh, some camps with Nightingale a few years ago uh, before he took this. But how – seriously, how exciting is this? It's that awesome. It, I, I can't tell you the last time. Like, Michigan's been good at a time. State's been good at a time with the abdicator there. But the both of them good at the same time to bring that Michigan-Michigan State rivalry in right now, and you got guys jumping one ship to get onto the, awesome. the, the other ship, and they're all just going right down here, right down back road to, to, to Copyware Arena here, or USA Arena, sorry, and, and grabbing these guys, and it's, it's excellent. When was the last time, well, maybe not you, but myself, I can't tell you, it might not be ever. I was sitting at the, the Trenton CC game last night, and my good buddy Danny Walsh, Walked up to him and he Hi, goes, how about that comeback? And we talked Michigan, Michigan State Isn't hockey. That he was in Buffalo with his youngest, and they said, he goes, we had iPads up and people were going crazy. Uh, by the way, my buddy John in Windsor said, end a second, Spitz three, Saginaw Spirit one. Uh, Ted, who I know is a big Spirit fan, said, uh, worst period of Saginaw in a long time. Uh, so I think I probably told you this story before, uh, Mike. <laughs> I can't. 
What? What? <laughs> Dino. Hey, Dino, how's it going? You read what? Read what? I just said. realized I see you at Powerhouse lately. Are you? you well, first of all, have you? Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I have been? Now this is gonna like I don't know if uh, my wife and daughter hopped onto this, but they are probably screaming at the screen. And it was actually the guy that he seen. I sent the link to, and I wish he was watching. It was Dudek. Oh, the brothers! Yeah, you guys my brothers, brothers they look just yeah, like yeah, it was Darren Dudek. That is too funny that he brought that. I apologize for cutting you off. So man. a few, no, a few years ago, uh, I, I had the fortune for a couple of years of doing some television games for Michigan State hockey, and I, I, I know I told yes. you this, but for the benefit of you guys out here, you have Wisconsin in Michigan State in Mun on a Friday night. Okay. And, and I think anybody who's followed college hockey at all, Wisconsin brand period, Michigan state brand period. It's a Friday night, Wisconsin, Michigan state. If there were 400 people in the building, it was an act of God. Yeah. It was so depressing to me. I mean, like, I'm not joking. It hurt my heart because when I was a kid and I had this conversation with red Berenson, and it's like, I'm sorry to name drop, but it's true. You couldn't go. Like, I would beg my dad, take me up to East Lansing. I want, I want to go see All Coach right. Mason. I want to go see Michigan State. You couldn't get tickets. You could you could not get tickets in month. So when Red first came to Michigan, they were such a crap show. Like, you could go. You could walk up on a Friday night or Saturday night and get tickets and go see them. And then Red obviously went like that. I love Red to death. Shout out to Red. Um, but that was, that was the case. Mike, it was so depressing to me. And now – you know, my daughter's a freshman at Michigan State, and she's getting to, to live through what so many of us lived through. Um, you can't get tickets there now. Forget it. You're not, you know, you better know somebody if you want to get a ticket to go see Michigan State play at month. And that's great. It, it, it's great. It's great for the area. It's great for everything. And when when colleges like this boom, they're going to pull these uh, NDTP kids in that we thought we wanted to talk yep. about. But you get a couple local kids in there. You get uh, Brandon Miles from CC at Michigan. Mm -hmm. You get Joey Larson, uh, Mr. Hockey from, from Heartland in there. You get these kids, and it just adds to it, and you want to go see it. It is a great thing. And, hey, hey, we know a bunch of students there. Yeah. So uh, we can get tickets. Yeah, if, if you get an opportunity, go check it out. And, and remember these words. I, I think we are at the very beginning of what should be a really cool chapter in the Michigan-Michigan State hockey uh, rivalry. I wanted to talk a little bit about some hockey in our backyard too. Like I said, we want to talk about everything. Um, Motor City Rockers out in Frazier, a couple of guys that we know uh, in, in Gordy Brown and Nick Field. Ben was in the chat earlier. Um, the FPHL, uh, Mike, I, like you and I got to go out there on a Friday night. I, I think I love the, the kind of old school hockey feel about it. And I'm not saying it's like watching slap shot or anything like that, but guys that are playing because they love the game of hockey and they want to keep going and for your Whaler fans out there. I ran into this guy a couple weeks ago, Danny Vanderweel. Remember that name? He's a, a, a prominent player uh, with, with the Rockers, but Mike, like honestly, um, for guys that love the game, to have that opportunity to keep playing, to, to, to keep fighting for the dream, just to play for the love of the game, I, I love that yeah. the idea of the Motor City Rockers. Absolutely. And, and I am in. I, I will go on a Friday. I will wear Rockers gear because I've been there for some high school playoff games. It's a great little barn there. They, they, they actually have a little uh, bar in the back of it now that sells adult beverages you can you can indulge in while you're watching the game. But again, for the love of the game, I went and I was going through the, the roster. There's a guy from uh, a 1987 birth year there. Do you think that guy doesn't love hockey? Love that guy is going and playing one of the hardest games, one of the meanest games in there. There's like 10 uh, local Michigan kids in there that, I don't check, they're not kids anymore, uh, playing. I, I Again, I think it's great. I'm going to be the first one to admit I didn't know much about it. I, I read up on it today, but I would love to get out there and watch a game. And like I said, I'd be a fanboy. I'm good. I know a couple guys, by the way. Ben does a great job calling their games. Uh, you know Ben. He's been yep. over for some of the barbecues. And look at the coach. Absolutely. The coach is actually. Hey, Gordy. Hi, Gordy. Gordy might be able to score some tickets sometime. You think? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe he can get us in. I think Gordy knows some people out there. But, no, seriously, uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about those guys, Mike and I are going to go out to a game 
uh, one night as well. Um, I Trust me when I say this, guys like Gordy and Nick Field are great hockey guys. They've done so yeah. many things uh, for this game at the high school level, at other uh, levels. It's, it's fantastic. So certainly um, that's something to keep an eye on and something that we will do our best to help educate you with go out on a Friday night and support these guys. You yeah, know, it's, it's a, there's always Mike. So they had this deal. I want to get it right. It, there was, um, they had like uh like all you could eat table and everything. Could you imagine? Like, wait, 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 wait. So we could get a table yeah, we, and all you could eat table. Yeah. There, there's like a little table and like you can, yeah. Gluten, gluten free options. Yeah, like, well, yeah, dude, just bring over a big <laughs> pile of hot dogs. You'd be like, one oh, of them. Kobayashi and, or Joey abs- Chestnut and, or whatever. Absolutely. We'll be doing, we'll absolutely. Be something like that. It's got to be interesting. I was thinking about today, once you, you sent this over to me and we were going to talk about it, I would love to hear Gordy talk about that transition uh, of going from kid, you know, coaching kids to. Gordy, come and, over sometime. And, and a 1987 birth year. You yeah. Know, a, a legitimate man. Gordy, right? come over sometime. Seriously. You're in the chat right now. Come over sometime. I'd, I'd love to talk to you. We can set something up and get the stream yard up there. Uh, right. Look at Nuge is in there. Coach Nuge. Nuge, what's up? Uh, Tom Nugent, one of the nicest humans ever, has By given far. back to the game uh, for, for many, many years as well. And I'm glad you. he is. Uh, my son's taking advantage of that. He, he loves Nugent. Yeah, for people that don't know him, we'll get to this in a second. Mike's son uh, plays for Catholic Central, the Shamrocks. And we'll talk about high school hockey in just a couple minutes because I think anybody that knows me knows that's a, a passion of mine. Uh, Memorial Cup is in our back. Yard. By the way, Joe, longtime Ice Time listener back in the day when the DFN signal would drop out when the sun set. Oh, absolutely. Isn't that funny? So, Joe, true story. Gordy said, you smoke the brisket and I'll be over. You can count on that. I got one sitting in the fridge right now. You can count on that. I can go get it and show you. I can hear Blake screaming, by the way. Like, Blake has his mic muted, but I can hear Blake screaming right now because he, he loves the brisket. Uh, Joe, true story. So, when I moved out here in 2004, I was doing the midday show and doing ice time. And there were nights where I would leave after doing ice time and I'd get five minutes West of the radio station. And you knew exactly where just the station yep. cut off. You knew exactly where it was. And I'd be like, I live five minutes away. How does the station cut out like that? But that's, that's the way it was. Boy, those were fun times. Uh, Memorial cup. Uh, I had the fortune for many, many years from 2002 to 2015 to work in the Ontario Hockey League. Um, I, my first couple of years, I did play-by-play on television for the Whalers, and then I did color on, on radio broadcast, and I had a chance one year to even work up in Saginaw as well. Uh, I love the Ontario Hockey League. Mike, I think you and I have had this conversation, but I'll let you speak for itself, you, you're, for yourself. For me, there are three tournaments, can't miss tournaments every year. Oh, yeah. There's the Stanley Cup playoffs. There's a World Junior Championship, and there is the Memorial Cup. Right. I, you were the first person I thought of when we knew it was coming to Saginaw. I think I immediately sent you a text. I immediately sent you the, the tweet that went out. And I know we've been talking about it, and I know I've been talking about being shoved in your duffel bag so that <laughs> I can get in uh, with you because I know you're going to be covering a lot of it. Yeah, you know what? We're, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I am uh, – uh, Blake said the bean pot tournament. Okay, that's pretty big, but we can't, you know, no dis and no disrespect to the NCAA tournament either. I mean, college hockey frozen four is unbelievable. Hi, Gail, by the way. Um, but th- those are those are the three for me. The Memorial Cup is for the people out there that don't understand it. Um, so in the Canadian Hockey League, there's the Western Hockey League, the Ontario Hockey League, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And um so you take the three champions and then the host team and you all come together and have like a week long tournament and it is the circus. And I still, Mike, chances are, if you're watching this show, you, you know what the Canadian hockey league is. Uh, but this is how I would always say it to people. Um, so um, who would you say is the greatest player of all time? And somebody might say Wayne Gretzky. Somebody might say Bobby Orr. Somebody might say Mario Lemieux. They all played for the Canadian Hockey League for different teams, whether it be Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, whether it be Ontario Hockey League. Um, who's your favorite Red Wing? Who's your who, Steve Eisenman, right? OHL guy. Uh, what about the beloved Mick? OHL guy. Uh, so many guys have come from the Ontario Hockey League, and that's not to dismiss anybody else. That's just historically speaking. Now, times have changed, and you're starting to see people produce 
players at an incredible rate. More on that just a second with their own backyard with what these guys are doing. But, Mike, um, the Ontario Hockey League has been a special league for a long time. And I urge you, if you have an opportunity, it's like the circus coming to town, but the circus is all hockey. Go see a Memorial Cup. I've been very fortunate to go to four in my lifetime. And to have it in our own arm back here is pretty special. Absolutely. I would I would love to get out there. I would love to see it. Uh, Saginaw is going to – obviously, the host team gets in. Uh, it's a shame that uh, Dean Locus got traded away. I know. I would have loved to have been able to see him. Good Calumet yeah, kid. Good Calumet kid. Uh, there's another kid that I'd be interested in seeing. Liam Storch plays out there. In yes. Saginaw. He's, a, he's an 06 that just tore it up growing up, and he, he made the jump to the O. So it'll be good to see. I mean, I was going through, like, what – what in my memory, and you know my memory, it's awful, uh, some of the, the Memorial Cups, and what is it? And you see I have it written right there, 2016, when Matthew Kachuk scores in overtime for London Knights, right, mm-hmm. uh, to, to win it. But – the whole tournament just it is great, but I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Do you believe the USHL should get an invite? Yes. Okay. I think it's gotten a lot better. The USHL has gotten a lot yep. better. Yep. Um, you see a lot It'd of kids. Fun. You see a lot of kids passing over the 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 O so that they can go to the U and their have college. college. Yep. yep. And, and have their college. Uh, so, because I know just a few years ago, they started talking about it and that people would say that they'd get killed. Is there any way, Blake, back at the studio, when when royalty appears in the chat, can we like have like a sounder, like, like a trumpet blaring? Because literally Livonia royalty, Ron yeah. Wanzell, I, I, do I curtsy? Do I bow? But Ron Wanzell is in the chat right now. Uh, Livonia royalty all day. We appreciate that. Uh, speaking of the USHL, uh, the US NTDP is still something that I think in our own backyard, the average person doesn't really get. Um, for you guys that are watching this, that are hockey fans, I think you know this, what the NTDP has been able to do since its inception and what it continues to do on a year in, year out basis now is is phenomenal. And, and one of the things that blows my mind is, is I wish there would be more people out there that would want to go and see it with their own two eyes. Because, I mean, there, there is this great product, literally three do- yeah. miles down the road from where I'm sitting. And, I mean, again, every year, Mike, every year, there might be four guys that go in the first round. There might be five guys that go in oh, the first incredible. round. incredible. I know this year there's going to be at least two. There's going to be at least two, and it's the Coles. Yep. Uh, there's going to be two Coles that, that go in the first, whether it be Iserman or or Cole Hudson, who I love his brother, by the way, Your Lane name. Hudson. Remember that name. But um, to me, Mike, to, to see what these kids do, they bring these kids in, and it's a big reason why you've seen the United States really flex its oh. muscle. In, in national tournaments now. And you mentioned that. That's that's big time. And everybody sees that. You see, Rob, right? Of course, you are royal. You are royal. <laughs> the, we'll the play royal the trumpet for you too, Rob, all right? We'll play that. Uh, now, now he's got me all, all off base on what I was saying about. So, so many people will watch and talk about them winning the world championship. Where are you in the stands there? Because you have to see it. And, and this is the, the number one thing I can push out there to parents uh, to take their kids is when your kid's birth year comes up for the U-17 team, which last year, this year's the 07s. Last year yep. was the 06s. I happened to be in Minnesota for the – for the <laughs> Hewlett. 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 There's some, there's some howl. There's wow, some howl. howl. Look at, I, I promised Rocky I'd wear that, by the way. How's that? Hey, Steve. Hewlett. So we're out in uh, Minnesota for the Null tournament, and I, I had a chance. Uh, Sebastian was there with me, and we went and watched the 06s, who was the U7 US NDP mm-hmm. team. That's a mouthful there. And watching that, I laughed the entire first period watching those 06s play men, right? They're playing men, and they were up, I believe, after the first period. And I'm like, there's no way they're 06s. And, and I looked at the guy next to me. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, I forget his last name. Now I just do it. But anyways, I looked right at him and I said, I need every 06 hockey parent to come watch this team and then tell me how good their kid is. Because you have those that my kid should be yeah. here. My, yeah. These are the cream of the crop. And this year was the 07. So when your kid's birth year comes up, go watch the U17 team and still tell me if you think that your kid's that good. It's hilarious. It's great. 
great hockey. And like you said, now we're seeing more of these kids in the college ranks, oh, right? Phenomenal. So they're, they're all playing there. Then we see them at the, the World Junior Tournament. Oh, so Jim Allen, them. more royalty. Oh. Jeez, oh, do heat. If you get the twins in here, you you know we got trouble. But um, no, seriously, that's another thing. I, I want to have like a group outing out there. Maybe I can talk to my guy Scott Monahan from the NTDP. He does a great job. Big Spartan, by the way, too. Another okay. reason to like him. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I'd love to have a bunch of people go out there. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, maybe we can book some seats. We can all go out there on a Friday night. It is great, great entertainment. Raymond, the goaltender, joining us. There, there's an old school guy. Nice to see you. Okay, pass it to you, my friend, as well. Um, all right, so we wanted to get to this as well. He and I both have a vested interest in this. As I mentioned, his son plays for uh, Catholic Central. We broadcast the games. Uh, to the majority of you out there, even the big hockey fans, I don't think you understand how – the high school scene has improved in this area. Forget about when we were kids. Forget about 10 years ago. I, w what's happened in the last couple of years in this state, whether it be in Houghton, whether it be in Marquette, whether it be in Byron Center, where it be in the traditional places like Trenton, uh, whether it be a traditional power like Catholic Central, but where this game has gone and, and the fact that so many incredibly talented players are choosing to play for their high school um, it is, is awesome because so many of those kids went to AAA in the past. Uh, one of our mutual friends, you, you know both, Mark. Yeah, one of our mutual friends, so Mark Beaufet, uh, Livonia legend, played for the San Jose Sharks, the 1994 U.S. Olympic team. He, he said it best. When he was a kid, he never, ever would have thought of playing for Livonia Stevenson, even though everybody begged him. Yeah. and probably want to won a state championship. Um, he was too good. He went on to Northern Michigan, won a national championship there in 1991, played for the Sharks, played for the Olympics, uh, and ended up finishing his career in Germany. And he tells people all the time now, he said, what would you rather do? Go play for your AAA team where you're buried on the third or fourth line mm -hmm. or, or go play for your high school team where you're getting PP1, PK1. You're getting top line usage. And, and so when you hear a guy of that caliber speak up the game, it really tells you how far yeah. it's come. And, and guys like Bofer, they're uh, unicorns, right? When we were out in Gross Point, there there was all kinds of kids that we knew we weren't going to get. They were the high end. You, when you're your top three players on a AAA team, we know you, we're not going to get you. And I still don't think you're going to get those kids. We'll beg them. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll beg them. Will you come? No, they're not going to come. All right. But those, like you said, those bottom level kids, it, it's such a shame because still some people have a bad taste in their mouth with the, the high school hockey. So it's great that someone like Brett, he would speak up and say, I, I wish I would have played high school hockey. It would have been great because it is. And we're getting more of those players. We see them on a, every on a day. Year. We see them on a daily every, basis. Every year. It is amazing. And unfortunately... I see too many kids when I'm out watching. I'm not ragging AAA hockey. It, it has its purpose. No, it's high. I end. Hope it's you high understand level. That. It's it's not the AAA game. It's there's certain players that are there, and you use that word. They're buried. They're buried on the line. They, they don't have the name. They they're, they're not going to get the ice time. That would they would be perfect high school. Yep. Players. Yep. Uh, someone sent me a picture. Our, our friend uh, Anna Panella. Hi Anna. Sent sent me a picture. Uh, that sounds bad. But she sent a picture of it was the 06 Renegades. I'm just it was the 06 Renegades. That the team was a wagon. Uh our our good friend Tommy Castamo. Mm -hmm. Castamo was a, a a coach. Ryan Lachance was a coach of that team. Every one of those kids, not every one of those kids, a lot of those kids could have went and played AAA. They they stayed at their home Rika KV and they showed me the the picture uh from Brighton. You've got Hominen, Watkins, McLaren, uh, and Cider. Then you have uh, Hallinan and Castamo playing for Heartland. And obviously, Sebby's over at CC, and one that I can't wait for you to see, and I do believe there's going to be an announcement coming out tomorrow on the games we're going to be doing at the showcase, is uh, Noah Krepke out in uh, Houghton. Did we hear the announcement? Did it, did it get announced? It, it came across. I think we did. I think we did. Did it? Did I, I know I did. Yeah. 
I, look, I know I did. Blake's already Blake's well, saying see, you're already at an hour. I told you when we start talking hockey, we can we can keep going. Uh, look at our, our buddy Clint, uh, Livonia guy. He is a uh, coach, of course, Father Gabriel Richard out in Ann Arbor. He's yep. in the chat. Can I keep going just for a couple minutes, Blake? Are we allowed to do that? Like seriously, Blake, you can text me if if we're allowed to do that. Great, that that'd be great. Uh, Kirk said those parents think their kids are going to the NHL straight from AAA. It's too bad. There's, uh, thank you, Blake. There, there's uh, too many parents like that out there. And and you know one thing that I learned when I was doing juniors, Mike, and yes. I think this applies everywhere. And my old boss, now the assistant coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins, said this to me. Everybody thinks that they got the road to the NHL figured out. Mm -hmm. And you know what? No two roads are the same. No, no two not, roads not, are at the same. All. not at all. Joey Larson is a kid that just a few years ago was yep. playing high school hockey. Now he's a star at Michigan State, and I'm telling you right now, he's going to play in the National Hockey League. And that, I'm not exactly going out on a limb when I say that either. Joey Larson is and, – and more than likely with the National Predators very, very soon, I might. That's the way it is. There, there, no two paths are the same, right? And, and to me, Mike, I, I would want to be in a place where I can get some playing time. And another quote that Mike Felucci used to drop on me all the time, if you can play, scouts will find you. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't matter where you are. I mean, there, there's, Thanks, a, ben. there's a ton of guys that come out of the KV, the, the ton of Finns that have come out. They've never gone AAA, never played, and, and they make it and they get their little cup of coffee and stuff. But it, like you said, no, no two paths are the same. And if you're going to go to a program, now you do have to know your program. They're, all programs aren't built the same. No we question. have this con conversation a lot, but there are coaches out there and we could rip them all off and, and we meet them and we talk to them and they're great. Not only great guys, but they are going to expo give you exposure and they are going to develop you. And, and, you know, but if you're that parent that thinks your kid is on the, the, the train to the NHL, don't go to those programs because you're not going to like it. Yeah. You're not going to want to hear it. Uh, you know what? There are a few comments. Let me let me scroll up because I, I know Dino had, had something good to say. I want to go back to what Dino had to say. Uh, probably stems from what you said, Mike. All these parents think their kid is too good for high school. Uh, Kirk said the same thing. Uh, ben, see you later. Appreciate it. Craig Ward, another coach out there. Uh, said, uh, I want to go back to his earlier comment, if I may. Kids are getting burnt out. The travel is too much. The girls and the boys, they can't enjoy their high school experience. At high school, you can play all year. There is enough opportunity. And I, I were both huge yeah. proponents of it. Um, let me tell you something. You can shut up now because I don't want to embarrass you. Catholic Central is one of the best programs in the nation. Forget about Michigan. One of the best programs in the nation. The nation. OK, they go and routinely play these powerhouse places. Sometimes they lose. Sometimes they win. But I mean, what our mutual friend, Coach Kalanicki, has done there and his staff tip of the cap to those guys. I say it all the time. I think it's good for this product. I think it's good for the state of Michigan. And, and I think what it does, Mike, is it, it, it gives hope to kids out there that, yes, you can take this path and you can move on. And not really that, Sean, you can have fun. Yeah. And you can play in front of an unbelievable crowd, an unbelievable atmosphere, 4,500 fans at USA Arena for the final four. Right. I mean, you you go to some of the games that we do. And that adds another element to it. Uh, you can have fun. You can have it. It's not always that serious. Now your game is, you're going to be on it. You're going to, you're going to be taught a way to play and you're going to play it. But high school hockey, again, it's not for everyone. But it's come to such a way it the, the best players are coming to play. All right, I promise, especially you, Blake, we're gonna wrap this up in about five minutes. We're just gonna just ask people a very simple question in a second. Coach Nugent, play high school hockey. 100%. Gordy Wilson, great job, boys. See you around the rink. Uh Gordy, tell us your favorite player of all time, by the way. Uh Clint Robert said, I have had a ton of kids play junior or senior year coming from triple A and said they wish they had played high school earlier in mm -hmm. their career. I'm not going to mention his name. You know who I'm talking about. Somebody at a very prominent program. His father came up to me last year. I'm not joking. This is not like tears in his eyes. And he said, thank you for promoting this game. I can't tell you mm -hmm. what a blessing this is, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, my son told me with two weeks ago in the season, the worst mistake he ever did was not coming to play for fill in the blank school earlier. Yeah. And it is a great opportunity. 
And that's the way it is. That doesn't surprise me. I, I asked Gordy, <laughs> uh, who's your favorite player ever? Cam Neely, number eight. As a Habs fan, I hated Cam Neely because he constantly scored on Patrick Waugh, especially in the playoffs. It was unbelievable like how he had Waugh's number. It was incredible. Um, all right, so this is how we're going to end today. It's going to be fun. And Mike and I will start. I'm going to let Mike go first. This is more difficult than you imagine because I think when I say who's your favorite player – you're apt to say, well, him, 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 him. No, no, I don't want to hear him, 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 him. One. Yeah, just, you have to pick one player, your favorite player. I don't want to hear how you like number 66. I don't want to. No. One player. Mike, your favorite hockey player of all time, other than your son, is. Well, and I, I've got to interrupt you because uh, the lovely Christy Ivasil just texted me and reminded me that I forgot Drew Lesperance on that 16. Oh, yeah. It was an yeah. unbelievable wagon. Yeah, hard team. One. Absolutely. Um, mine's probably the most obvious one. But as you say, it's a difficult choice. because You texted me earlier and I went back and forth. But it, it's the captain. It's number 19. It's Steve Eiserman growing up and playing that. I mean, people I don't think a lot of people know or remember how good he was. And not only was he the captain, he was getting 150 points. He was chasing Lemieux and Gretzky and doing all these things. But you go into a locker room when I was a kid and everyone was fighting for number 19. Sure. That, that's what it is. You walk down in my basement. I'm a fanboy, right? There, the, you, you see the the throne I have to, to Iserman above my television there. So it's definitely Steve Iserman. I love 19 as well, but a different 19. I think you guys <laughs> all know who I'm going to say, if you follow me at all. Uh, Larry Clark Robinson who his words, not mine, called me his friend. Yes, he did. I'm going to yes, have that. That is going to be on my on my gravestone when I die. Sean Belegian, friend of Larry Robinson. We, Those were his words. Now, I, everybody, that, I didn't say it. Larry Robinson said that. He called me his friend. No, he did that. I, I remember he the story. That. Was that on the air or when you it was guys, on the air? It was on the, it was air. On the air. Can yep. we get that cut to Blake so oh, he can yes, put that into can. our intro? Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> oh, yes, we can. That is... You can actually listen to that call where I Oh, there's myself. some great ones here. Uh, Seabass, of course, yeah. we know who Seabass is. Ron said the captain, pretty hard to argue. Jake Paul Coffey, phenomenal player. Yep. Uh, Julie said Iserman as well. I think numbers, gonna, a lot of people are going to say that. Gail said Ozzy. Gail, oh, I'm going I'm to try my best to get Ozzy to come out here. I just, I'm not name dropping. I talked to him today. I'm going to do my best to get Ozzy to come down the basement. Mike, Mike Liu. How about that one? Nathan, really? Yeah. Claude Lemieux, Game 7, 1986, Adams Finals. We used to quote that call in French all the time. Uh, Ray, Raymond, who is a goaltender, yeah. Gilles Gilbert, that's a good one. Yeah. You almost have to get the stories behind some of this. Like, where does Mike Liu come from? Yeah, that's a – that's a. I met Mike. He's a really nice guy, too. He really, really – I didn't is bring he up – an agent now? Yeah, I didn't bring up 1986. No, no, nor I should you, nor I should you. Uh, Bernie Perrant, look at Nooch. Pretty, pretty like hard that. to argue like that. that. A, a guy that won a couple of con Smythe. Uh, Jason uh, Big Bird, you're absolutely right. That was my guy. Uh, Clint said uh, the captain. Uh, Steve said it'll always be the captain. Uh, Psycho Eddie, Eddie Belfour. Can, can, People can, forget how good Eddie was, he though. Was, really, he was, he was phenomenal. He, he was, but I can't think. All I think of is Fubu when I when I hear because. <laughs> <laughs> billion dollars yes that's, that's all i can say I, but he was so good i am just glad he took cold medicine in the stanley cup for the double he needed it uh ron said Guy lafleur our our generation yeah. ron the flower i i will never forget so i can still remember the goal he scored against the bruins in 79 remember late Is in the game before skating gingerly yeah you got it uh, gives it up to Lemaire, back to Lafleur. He scores. Lafleur skating rather gingerly out of his own end. Gives it up to Lemaire, back to Lafleur. He scores. And I, I, I know you and I have talked about this. I hope you remember this. I watched an interview. I'll never forget this. I was eight years old, and somebody said, "Guy, you always find yourself find yourself in the big moment and scoring the big mm -hmm. goals. You know what? 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 What is it?" And and Guy like almost incredulously looks at the at the camera and goes, "What do you expect, the man that Guy Lafleur?" <laughs> How do you even respond to that, right? No. Like, how do you, you how do you, you even you respond can't. to that? No. He was so good. Like, you know, rest his soul. He was such a good uh, hockey player. Uh, Nathan said, "My dad was uh, passed a couple of years ago." I'm sorry to hear that. So did mine. 
Bobby Orr for him. Uh, my Pavel. Aunt Maureen, Pavel Datsuk. Boy, was he exciting. Oh, look at this one. Tony Sierra. I, it's funny, Tony. I'm not joking. That's why Mike is laughing. I literally talked to that guy this afternoon. And I can literally tell you that he's going to be a guest on this show very, very soon. And, and I'll tell you why he's going to be a guest on the show bring when his, he comes on. Does he bring the lady? He's not going to bring his girlfriend. And I promised I was not going to talk about his girlfriend. You can look up who his girlfriend is right now. But I said, we're going to talk hockey. All right. Because you guys are, right, you know what? You might already know this. Hi, Olivia. It, Olivia, your favorite hockey player, your dad, by the way. Um, no, true story. Um, you guys might uh, remember I did this alumni game against the Bruins um, in September. There's an alumni game coming up against the Rangers. And all I'm going to say to you is the roster for both teams is unbelievable. I showed you the roster. We're not allowed to talk about it. Nope. But what did you think about the roster? I sent you the big shocker that that when I seen it. But there are a couple names on there you'd be surprised. Right. I, like I've been to a lot of these charity games, you know, taking the kids. And, stuff, and it's usually a lot of riffraff. Not a lot of riffraff there. And there's a couple of names that are going to be on there that are going to be very interesting when they're on the ice. Uh, Ron, I'll have Ally Frady on any time. Uh, another Livonia legend. Al can come on any time. Uh, Luke Glendening. Blake, Luke Glendening, uh, workman, no doubt about Ooh. that. All right, we got to get out of here. Blake is screaming at me right now. No, he's not. <laughs> but these are supposed to be like 40, 45 minutes. You see what happens when you get a couple of hockey nerds together. Mike, I, like that was like 10 minutes, right? It was like legitimately an hour and 10 minutes. Wow. Todd fell asleep already. Look at Todd. Todd he's got, it's almost like when I send him a text at like 9.15, it says uh, notifications <laughs> on silence. Todd's been on silence for like a half hour. Uh, no, seriously, you guys, thank you. If you're just watching it now, uh, thank you. We appreciate it. We're going to talk hockey. Mike's going to come on anytime he wants to come on. Uh, make sure you check out our games. Uh, we're doing four, count them four, next Friday uh, from the Trenton Showcase. Do you remember all of them off the top of your head? There is, we have Traverse City Central and Cranbrook. Yep. Then we have UDJ and um, Mike, help me out here. And then we have Catholic Central and Houghton, which is a battle of two top three teams. And then we have Trenton and Marquette to wrap up the day. East Grand Rapids, UDJ Boom. and East Grand Rapids. See, I remembered it. Yep. So, um, yeah, you can check us out on the State Champs uh, YouTube page, Twitter, all that stuff. We're, we call a lot of games together. In the meantime, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. Have a great night. Blake and I are going to talk to you again tomorrow. We've got the AFC-NFC championship uh, thing going on. Very quickly, Mike, do the Lions win? Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> You heard it right there. Blake and I will talk about it tomorrow. See you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Off the Air with Sean Belegian. Featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.